Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm Robert Green. And I'm Leslie. And we're with Phil Japixi. Hey. For another episode in our mini series on automated software testing. So, so far, just to recap, we talked about why it's important. Uh, we talked about X unit. X unit. In depth. So we X did that in three episodes. Right. And today we're going to talk about behavior driven design using M spec. Right. Also, so, known as machine specifications, but M spec for short. Yep, so, that's a bit of a mouthful. That leads to two questions. What is behavior driven design? What's it got to do with testing? Right. Why are we talking about this? So, so first thing I want to show is this slide. So, a bunch of Legos here, right? We can all agree that this is really TDD, right? I am testing my individual unit of work, which in Lego is the Lego blocks. Okay. Mm -hmm. You into Legos? I know my kids were I big love time Legos. Legos right? I am obsessed. My wallet hates me for it, but it's we have we have <laughs> bins of Legos and no instructions, although you can find them online. Mm. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever tried to build the Millennium Falcon without the instructions. It's pretty near impossible. Yeah, right? hard pass. <laughs> so so this is test driven development. We're making sure all of the blocks work correctly. Okay. But we're not checking to make sure they work correctly together. So let's look at this Lego, and this is from Legoland outside of Orlando. And I know I already, Leslie already knows the answer. So I'm going to ask you, Robert, what's wrong with this picture? Can you spot it? It's a submarine. I'll give you, it's give a you that much. Um, you can't unsee it now, can you? No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Um, I'm going to guess that the unit test for the periscope all passed, the unit test for the hatch all passed, but you can't use this particular periscope unless the hatch is open. Why um, do submarines have periscopes? So they can be underwater and see what's above water, right? So they didn't check the behavior of the periscope in relation to the submarine. Okay. Right? So what we want to do when we're talking about BDD, behavior-driven design, behavior-driven development, there's some discussion. But we're going to use a framework called Machine Specification, or MSpec for short, that uses BD st BDD-style um, testing, mm -hmm. right? And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a context, right? And within that context, we're going to have several certs. We still have an arrange section. We only have one action. And then we're going to confirm the behavior of those actions. And so we're still using X unit for our We're not using X unit. We're not we're using, using a X different unit at all. framework called M spec. Oh. Would there ever be a case where you'd want to use the two together? Yes. All the time. But it's you don't use them together in the same test. You use them together in your solution. Okay. Right? So you're as you're writing your individual units, you're still using X unit to mm -hmm. test those and you never stop. Uh, so you're still testing the periscope. You're still testing the hatch. Right. So this is now on top of that to make sure that as a system, things right. work together. Yeah. Okay. So, so when underwater and needing, so if you look at the title, right, we, and I put demo in front of it because it messed up my other tests. So when authenticating an admin user, actually, you know what? Let's, let's follow up with that same example, right? And we're going to say... Let me get rid of all this. When using a periscope, okay, we're going to establish um, establish is our arrange, mm -hmm. right? I'm not going to actually fill it out because I don't want to waste the time doing it. Um, and that is not how you spell periscope. Um, there's my teardown if I need it. Here's my action, right? Mm -hmm. So this would be the captain is using the periscope, right? It should allow boat to stay submerged. Okay. So the wording that you're using, uh, can you basically write whatever you want and then yep. apply that to yep. a class? Should see oh. above the water. And we're not going to go any farther than that. Okay. Okay. Now, you might be wondering why 
establish, clean up, because, and it are all showing up as keywords because they are delegates that come from the machine spec framework. Uh, you know what? We did this for N unit. Uh, we should do this for M spec. As, yeah, I was going to ask, like, is this a package? So or? this is a several packages that we pull in. Mm -hmm. I started with an X unit template. And the reason I started with an X unit template, a lot of times you'll use both together, and you can, but also it sets up the test SDK, the things that we need to run unit tests in an automated fashion in Visual Studio. There's also a command line that you can use with M spec just as with X unit. Okay. Now, if you were a fan of um, blah, blah, a fan of MSpec prior to .NET Core, because it was really, really awesome back then, it took a long time for MSpec to catch up. It's open source. It's not as actively being worked as XUnit, and it's only within probably six to nine months uh, that it actually started working with Visual Studio in a .NET well .NET not Core. Oh, that's so hard to say. <laughs> .NET post framework. Can we say that? Sure. .NET course has done that. Um, and then, you know, again, just as my uh, muscle memory, I always add in MOQ into it. But let's go back. So we just created this class named when using a periscope, mm -hmm. and we did two asserts that are worded like this. So let's build, and actually, this is how how periphery this kind of is. Um, I use ReSharper as well as the built-in test runner. Um, right now, MSpec isn't working with ReSharper. Yeah. It was like six months ago. So MSpec isn't nearly as popular as XUnit. Um, it has some limitations, but it has some stuff that's really, really cool that I want to show. So if I go to my test explorer, and I go to my machine specification folder, and go into the root, and I see a test here that says, when using a periscope, and we expand this, should allow boat to stay submerged and should see above water. So what mm -hmm. happens here is the parent of the testing group is the name of the class. Every one of the its is a test, okay? Okay. So the nice thing about this is I can, I can diagram not diagram, but I can write out, here's my context when using a periscope. Here are my assertions. It should allow you to be underwater. It should allow you to see above water. It should not leak water, you know, whatever they are, right? Um, I, wanna, I want to build a calculator, or when using the calculator, it should add these numbers. It should subtract these numbers. It should divide these numbers. It should do whatever a TI-35 can do, because that's the okay. best calculator ever, right? So now you have, I don't know, that's a geeky statement. I prefer um, the TI-89. <laughs> yeah, well, you're a little younger than me, so I'm, it's old school is hard to get out of my system. Um, so I have all these its that are verifying the context that I'm in. So your question is, would you use them together? So I'm not going to write a data-driven test in MSpec to make sure that my add function works with all these different inputs. I'm going to do that next unit, right? But I want my entire behavior to be tracked. And the nice thing about MSpec is, um, and I, I haven't gotten it working. I'm not saying it doesn't work, but I haven't gotten it working yet in a .NET Core world. But in a prior to .NET Core, you could actually run a command line that would then take all of your context and your specifications, dump it out in either HTML or MSDN style documentation, and there's your entire system. Right. Right, so you've documented everything in there. So is this a way to test something like, if a new order is entered, it should write the order of the order date, order table, write the details to the details table, update the total sales in the customer table, email the customer, and uh, email the sales rep. Mm -hmm. So cool. that's a, a full an example. Pipeline. Of, because each of those are methods that are individually tested. Correct. But how do we know they're actually occurring in the order they're supposed to occur and that they actually and all occur building off of each other when correctly. the user clicks save? Is that a, a good use for it? Every, I agree with everything you said except for the word order. 
because you can't guarantee the order of okay. when the okay. delegates execute. Okay. But yes, so when, again, these are very trivial, but when authenticating an admin user, mm -hmm. right? So here's my service that I have to create an instance of, that's my arrange. Here's my action, authenticate, with that very secure password right mm -hmm. there. I didn't use uh, P at sign SSW0RD, so it's a little more secure if I just spell password out. Um, but then it should indicate the user's name and the session ID should not be null. Okay. Right? So these are things that happen, but yes, absolutely. When an order is placed, um, inventory needs to be reduced. The right. credit card needs to be charged. Uh, the packing list needs to be generated, right? You know, all of these things. And so you're, you're, it's the behavior of your system, right? Mm -hmm. This is the, I want to do a Kessel run in seven parsecs, right? Which you're still going to write tests around the engines. You're still going to write tests around the, car, the hidden cargo bay, all those individual things, okay. right? Um, the nice thing about it, again, is when you run it, these all come up as individual tests, right? It right. really enforces that single action because whereas you can wrap this in curly braces, um, I believe you get a compile warning. Um, so they built an analyzer into it saying, eh, 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 you shouldn't do that. Oh, right? Okay. Um, but we can also, just like everything we've talked about so far, we're going to talk more in our next episode when we talk about mocking and how we do exceptions, right? We're going to say, um, we're going to catch this exception, right? So the new sample service, when um, an exception is thrown with authentication, we're actually going to catch it, and then we're going to examine the exception. Mm -hmm. Right. So maybe they logged in with a bad username and password. To be clear, you should not use exception handling for that. Right. Exception should be exceptional and should not be business logic. Right. Right. But this gives you that capability of saying, I'm going to catch this exception and then let me examine it. Right. So each of the it's or the assertions are then going to say, here's the reason, here's the argument, here's the details. Mm -hmm. Right. Is this also, if you, write this ahead of time with stubbed out code, it's basically the spec, right? It's your exactly. understanding that you've spec'd it correctly. Correct. And then you could sit down with the end user and say, here's what I'm testing for, and then, oh wait, it's supposed to do this as well. Oh, okay. Back in full framework yeah. days, like I'm saying, I'm not saying that MSpec can't handle it. I haven't figured out how to do it yet in the .NET Core world. And that's on me, I haven't done the research because it, like I said, it only recently started working in .NET Core. But back in full framework days, as part of our build pipeline, we'd actually run the command line to build the HTML of all the specifications of the system. We automatically publish it to a wiki. Mm -hmm. So the product owner and the stakeholders could look and see what we're testing. And because the ones that aren't complete come up like this as not implemented, Right. Let me let me run one of the ones that is implemented, so you can see the difference. Um, any one of these, I think, will work. Right. So now, I'm implemented. This one's not implemented. See the different icon, mm -hmm. right? And um, again, when you build that report, they can also track where you are. In progress, right? This test is passing. This test is passing. Mm -hmm. This one hasn't been implemented yet, so they haven't gotten that far. Cool. Right? There's a couple more features. Um, I like behaviors. It's really been documented as an anti-pattern by the people who took over support. But really what I'm doing is I'm, I'm encapsulating certain business, certain business rules, right? So here um, I have, when using behaviors is my context, right? And it's going to behave like these other behaviors that I have. And so this is cross-cutting concerns. It should log the call. Um, it should report the error. It should, you know, these things that are repetitive, uh, you can put in here. And so it should equal be not null, right? This is the same test as before, but all I did was, if you see there's a class name is authentication behaviors, marked with the behavior label, mm -hmm. behaviors, Vocabulary matters, 
And then I just say, hey, include all of my tests from this other class into here. So it's a way of encapsulating. Yeah, okay. The reason it's an anti-pattern is there's no, there's no way to authenticate that this delegate and the types you're dealing with, actually, there's no compile time enforcement, right? So you can shoot yourself in the foot, right? But I still like that. Um, real quick, there's also after context. So after your entire context runs, this is the fixture teardown equivalent, mm -hmm. right? After everything is done, we're going to clean up after ourselves. And then here's a teardown and set up for each individual context. Now, it will not do it because if you think about it, there's only one action and one arrangement and then multiple asserts, right? So it does it after the entire, if you got, you have to think of the context in MSpec almost the same as a unit test in X unit, right? Because it's one encapsulated unit. It just happens to be a class and not a method, right? So when we talk about set up teardown. Um, this is when the entire assembly has completed. This is before the, any context in the assembly start, mm -hmm. right? So, so this is, and I said it backwards before, this is the, I'm gonna fire this off before any other test runs, or I'm gonna fire this off after every test is run. The other one I showed you, and I apologize, I misspoke. Um, it's easy to do when you're live. Um, this is after each context, okay. right? Each specification. And that's, I mean, that's really it. So that is MSpec. It's, cool. um, I really, really like it using it in conjunction with XUnit. Because what, what I have, and we're slowly switching over to this at work because it was about six months ago. I tried a long time ago. Six months ago, I realized that it was working again, right? And I know I could probably fork it and do a commit and everything else. I just don't have the bandwidth for that. And so now we're going to start to incorporate this into our regular workflow so that we can get that documentation of, you know, when a lead comes in from the field, here are right. the things we have to do, mm -hmm. right? Right. And when all these are done, then you're good. But let's look at this. How do we validate that this is a repeat client or not, right? And now we have an X unit test that right. dives deep into that using the inline data, checking phone numbers, checking emails against all the different situations. Right. Sweet. Excellent. I like this focus on like the bigger picture yeah. when it comes to testing. I, I know, like, I feel like when we talk about testing, not just in this series, but beyond, we're always talking about, yeah, just the individual Lego pieces. And it's like, how does it all fit together? What, what do we do to make sure that all of these are kind of working in the way that we expect them to? Well, and, and as developers, we have to think about the Lego blocks. Yeah. Right? Because that's what you code. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and so if you, we all start thinking about the submarine, right? And then go down and go down, okay, periscope. I'm gonna write the periscope now, right? And then mm -hmm. we go back to the submarine and go, oh, I'm gonna do the hatch now. Right. right? Don't all and then, always... Yeah, and then we're not always putting those pieces in place and, and making them work together mm -hmm. until we get into that final application. And QA comes back to us and says, um, we're drowning <laughs> because I have to open the hatch, use periscope. Right. right. <laughs> exactly. Yep. So all right, cool. well, that's what I got on this one. Sweet. All right. Well, so, good stuff. So we're now at this point about halfway through. And in our next episode, we are going to start looking at mocking. Finally, right? Yeah, I, I know. I've been waiting for this. Shoot, we've been having it up for so long. So we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox. All right. Peace. Take care.